Welcome to the Planet Rock Podcast, the hottest show in the cosmos. Get ready for insight and inspiration right here on Planet Rock with your special guest, Aaron Avant Johnson, and your cosmic guide through our ever-changing space and time, your host, Raquel Herring. Welcome to another episode of the Planet Rock Podcast, your go-to spot for all things relationships, personal growth, and navigating life's twists and turns. From the depths of dating, marital dynamics, to the heights of spiritual journeys, entrepreneurship, money, pets, plants, we explore every facet of human connection. I'm Raquel Herring, your cosmic companion on this wild ride called life. Each episode of Planet Rock is packed with insights and inspiration to help you thrive in this ever-changing world. From heartwarming stories to candid conversations, we're here to empower you and uplift your spirits. Tune in every Thursday at noon on envision-radio.com for some real life real people goodness. Follow me on social media for updates and swing by my website at RaquelHerring.com to stay connected. So settle in and let's rock your world one relationship at a time right here on Planet Rock. Welcome to another captivating episode of the Planet Rock podcast where we bring you stories of inspiration and empowerment from the world of entertainment. Today, I am thrilled to introduce you to a true luminary in the industry, Aaron Avant Johnson. Aaron's journey as an international award-winning filmmaker began at the remarkable age of what? When he founded his production company at just age nine. His creative genius just shines through early on evidenced by his debut book, You Are Never Too Young, which encouraged young minds to pursue their dreams fearlessly. Throughout his career, Aaron's work has been a testament to resilience and triumph over adversity. From his poignant short film, Lost, which depicted his personal experience of loss and trauma, to his latest projects captivating audiences worldwide Aaron's storytelling powerless knows no bounds. But Aaron's impact extends far beyond the silver screen. He's a passionate advocate for youth empowerment, having spoken spoken to over 100 schools and juvenile centers, and his community arts program, Yanti, has empowered countless young individuals to pursue their creative passions. So join me today in welcoming Aaron Avant Johnson to the Planet Rock podcast, where we'll dive into his remarkable journey, explore the power of his storytelling, and discover the driving force behind his unwavering commitment to making a difference. Welcome, Aaron. (laughs) Thank you so much, Raquel, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for joining me. I'm excited for you to be here too. My goodness, nine years old? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Nine years old. (laughs) How remarkable. Can you tell us about the moment you discovered your passion for storytelling and filmmaking? Most definitely. So, um, yeah, the journey began when I was nine years old. Um, My mom, one night, she was trying to, like, create a slideshow on her computer um, for church. And I was just like, okay, I was like, well, let me see if I can crack at it, you know, because she couldn't figure it out at the time. So I had took her old little laptop and I stayed up that entire night just uh, honestly learning the program. And I taught myself that that program um, like in 24 hours and I created her slideshow and I was just like, well, whatever this is, I want to go into it. Um, And at the time that was editing. And then from editing that went to uh, writing and then I went to filmmaking and then film producing and it just kind of took off from there. So that was the initial, I guess you can say genesis of what happened when I was nine. Wow. That's amazing. Nine years old. Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is, this is the age of the millennials and their technology, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just get it like that from babes, right? 
<laughs> that is so awesome. Um, your debut book, You Are Never Too Young, yes, aimed ma'am. to inspire children to pursue their dreams. So what inspired you to share this message and how has it impacted young readers? Mm-hmm. So at this particular time, when I was 12 years old, um, at this time, I, I started my production company. So I was doing a lot of you know music videos and like documentaries and commercials and stuff for us like you know several several different people um so you know i had i had a, a business at the time and i was a young kid i was still like in in school at the time um well public schooling rather uh, so i was like but you know what i know i'm not the only kid that wants to start a business or that wants to you know start going after their dreams for the ones that can do it you know at that particular time so i was just like well let me write a book you know let me write a book to encourage you know the other youth so then you know at the age of 12 that's when um came out with the book you are never too young um and uh yeah that book went pretty far we traveled a little bit of everywhere um with that book um and that book has definitely touched some lives you know to god be the glory um for that you know just giving that uh encouragement to all of the young kids you know because especially i was young at the time myself so you know that you know that went to motivational speaking so i would travel to like you know schools and then i would do a lot of like mentorship you know workshops with other kids and different things like that and you know from that book that came into another book when i was like i think 14 or 15 that dealt with uh you know childhood depression and you know mental health that is like you know not really spoke at the time it wasn't really spoken about um in a in a status where everybody's not talking about mental health which is beautiful right um, which we constant it constant it needs to be a constant conversation um but you know at the time i felt like you know there really wasn't nothing really happening until that market dealing with you know the minds of you know the young kid. So then that came yeah. with that book when I was like, you know, 14, 15. So that was kind of like my, I guess you could say the genesis, I guess you could say of the writing part of my of my journey. And that's kind of how all of that, you know, kicked off um, and started. Nice. Well, what is, what's the name of that book, the title? Definitely. It's Winning Mind Battles. That is the name. Winning Mind Battles. Um, it's available on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, um it's still out there for those uh who want to uh go ahead and get it. it's definitely a book talking i'm um, speaking to the youth um and i actually will be coming out with another book dealing with mental health now that i'm you know uh i don't want to say much older but now that i'm older uh, i'm not that same you know of course 14 15 year old you know kid no more you know a lot of life has happened since then but yeah. um definitely you know i, I want to come out with another going to come out with another book um, targeting mental health, but that's kind of like how that book journey kind of started. Nice. That is so interesting that at 12 years old, that stood out to you mm-hmm. that that was something that was needed. Yeah. Yeah. You most know. definitely. Yeah. And kids, you know, I don't know, maybe no one's really like <laughs> giving them the credit or really paying attention, but yeah, kids needed that. So to be 12 year olds and to be 12 years old and be so insightful about mm-hmm. the necessity of mental health for people your age that was that's amazing yeah like and what then, made you what made you be so insightful like what did you notice it was honestly i can say uh, well i'm gonna be honest everybody that knows me they say i'm like an old soul um <laughs> you know they've been they've been saying that all my life um so i'm, I'm pretty much like an 83 year old man i'm gonna be honest <laughs> <laughs> but uh it came from personal experience you know because during that time i was battling a lot mentally myself um even though i was working and traveling and at this particular time um when winning mind battles came out i, I believe i was like 15. so at this time i had already been on a bet at the time i was already in magazines and you know and traveling and you know working as you know a young you know, a filmmaker and then, you yeah. know, speaking in several, several different ways, but I was battling myself with a lot of things um, because even during that time, you know, I was going through, you know, bullying at the time at school and I was dealing with a lot of things outside of school. And then when you are, um, when you're a young person working in, in an adult industry, and I know you can definitely relate when you're a young person, you know, coming into an industry where it's, um, it's it's adult dominated basically you yeah. are you it's like a lot of proving yourself so right. um a lot of you know it's like a lot of growing up you got to like be on it you got to be yeah. on it so you know i would say it it, it it, it definitely took its toll um, on me at that particular mm-hmm. time. And even though I wrote the book, even after I wrote the book, it still took 
time for me to work through a lot of the things that um, basically I was working through um, yeah. at that particular time. So um, I was just like, well, I know I can't be the only one dealing with right. like, you know, these type of feelings, these type of issues. And, you know, and it, it, I would say at that time, I just felt as if, um, you know, the young people, you know, our, our, our perspective when it came down to mental health and when it came down to, you know, the way we feel and the way we navigate our emotions, it yeah. it really wasn't paid enough attention to. Right, you right. Because like, you're like, oh, you're young, go to school. You know, you right. ain't doing nothing real. Like, you know, but not even knowing, like, you know, I can only speak from my experience, you know, not knowing you know, that you're dealing with things in school, but then you go out of school and it's like you have to, I don't want to say put on a mask, but it's like you you got to, you can't be a kid in this field. You know, you have yeah. to, you know, you, you got you to gotta be on it. And a lot of times, you know, that can bring a lot of different pressures that can bring a lot of different, you know, things happening mentally. So I was just, yeah. you know, it, it took some time, you know, to work through, but, you know, yeah. I, I'm glad that that book as well was able to, you know, touch you know the youth and for the youth that's still out there that needs the book you know it's yes. still you know available you know for you all and i definitely encourage you all to you know definitely get it and, and you know preferably you know it does something for you the way it did something for me so awesome yeah i mean when you're a kid in this business you're between two worlds absolutely you know, you're between that world like you say where it's it's adults and it's professional yeah and and they're expecting you to come in and be this professional kid or just professional period you know yeah. and so like the the time to be a kid isn't really there now that never really bothered me because i i like to be around adults anyway but yeah being in school yeah that was a lot because you know people are seeing you people are knowing what you're doing some are like you know cool with you and just like congratulate you others are like Psst. Well, you ain't this, you ain't that, you know, and they start bullying you and, and picking on you. And then you have that place where you have to stand up for yourself. You know, you have to confront it. So, yeah, it's um, it's a lot to deal with for kids. You it's know? tricky. It's definitely yeah. tricky. And then at the time, too, I dealt with... um. I, believe it or not, what was crazy? I did not have a lot of friends uh, growing up, like like in school, um, yeah. because I was I was I'm very much a loner. I was very much the quiet kid. Um, I was so quiet to the to the fact that when teachers they roll call, a lot of times they just kind of they would li literally overlook my name because they didn't think I was in the room. That's how quiet. I, I remember one time I was in class and we was it wasn't until mid class until she looked and she saw me way in the corner. She said. Aaron, you was here? Oh, wow. Let me go ahead and, and <laughs> like, that's, that's how quiet I was. So I'll say, you know, wow. my experience came from a lot of like, you know, at the time, you know, kids, of course, this is why too, I've always, anytime I, I speak to schools or I speak to children, I always tell them the power of their words um, because you never know the effect of what it can have on somebody else. So I know for me at that particular time, you know, I was, I, I dealt a lot with uh, childhood obesity. So, you know, at the time I'm very, you know, overweight for my age. So a lot of the bullying came from that um, as well. So it was like, you know, while I was in school, I kind of felt like I shouldn't be here. Like, you know, yeah, and then yeah. when I would go outside of school, you know, it was like, it was almost like I was living two different, two different lives, two different That's worlds. Right. And then right. it, it, it gets confusing because in school, it's like you know you're being told one thing you know you're being treated yeah. one way but then it's like when you go out into the world you're being looked at as another way so right. it's kind of like a battle of the mind because it's like you're making conscious agreements with negative uh condensations that is not you know that you shouldn't make agreements with um at that particular time and it took some time you know for me to uh get the grasp and to understand that as i got older but that was like during that time that's kind of like where my mind frame was so it was pretty tricky it was pretty tricky yeah, it's tricky to navigate, but yeah. I'm, but I'm sure your parents played an instrumental part in your life to cope with those those different worlds and to support you in your business in in, yeah. in growing into being this professional that you are today. Tell mm -hmm. tell us about you know that relationship and, and your parents giving everything that they had. My parents are literally a godsend. I, I would say this: they are a godsend. Two of the most amazing people that I I, I know, and I'm not just saying it because they're my parents. I'm, I'm saying that because of you know knowing the things that they've gone through, knowing their stories, and the impact that they have on people. I um, mean, the impact they've just had on me. You know, they've they've taught me a lot. Um, and uh, along with that, you know, they've always been that support system that 
you know, that that backing partner, you know, um, and I work yeah. very heavily, you know, with them in, you know, this business because, you know, we do work as a family production company as well. Like, for an example, um, my last feature, Predestined, it was like a family affair. We all came together. You know, I wrote the movie. My brother, he did the soundtrack for the film. I mean, it, nice. it was a musical. It was a musical. So he did. Okay. Uh, uh, he wrote all of the music, arranged the music. My mom, she was executive producing. My dad executive produced um, and they were in it. You know, we gave them parts to, you know, be in it as well. So it's like we, we always worked as a close knit, as a family. Nice. Um, yeah. And I know that's not something everybody has. So, you know, that's something I definitely cherish and I, I don't take for yeah. granted at all. Um, but it's, it's definitely been a blessing. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I mean, that was my mom. She worked as my manager. And let me tell you, she was there all the time. I love yeah. it that, that people remember from, from back then, like, man, your mom was there. She was protecting you. She was making sure that whatever was happening, it was right for you. Yes, so, ma'am. So, yeah, she, that, that's like your champion. Oh, you yeah. Know, your parents and your family are your champion in this business, you know, because you need it. And you, you need that protection, especially as Absolutely. a child. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So tell us about the film Predestined. Yes. Yeah, so Predestined was my uh, my latest feature. Um, uh, we actually did Predestined in COVID, funny enough. Um, so COVID had just happened. This was 2020. COVID had just happened. Um, and at the time, we was already gearing up at the top of the year to shoot a feature. So we was just like, OK. Dang, COVID done happened. Oh, Lord, right. what are we going to do? So we was just right, like, we're, we're still going to make this happen. We're, like, we're still going to make it happen. So it was it was yeah. honestly coming from doing uh, my first feature when I was 16, uh, which was Lost, and then now having to shoot a feature in the middle of COVID was definitely different. It was a, mm. it was a different experience because now everybody's with masks, you know, everybody's yeah. social distancing, you know, and that's, it was it was kind of weird, you know, at the time, because this is the first time, you know, we've ever had to run a set like that, you know. Mm. Um, so it was definitely challenging, but we 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 managed to get it done. Um, and Predestined, just to let you all know what the movie is about, Predestined um, is an urban musical series or well, urban, urban musical film, excuse me, about a preacher's kid turned R and B star whose life gets flipped upside down when her mom mm. passes and leaves her the church. So um, it's like we're going between Hollywood and the the, the gospel world, basically. Um, so we see a lot of conflict there, but it's 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 honestly what I like to compare it to. I always say it's almost like the fighting temptations meet dream girls almost um, okay. and like merging together. So it was it was a fun project to um, create. You know, we have a lot of notable faces in there. Um, and it was just honestly a really, really good feel good type of type of movie um and so i'm so excited about that and that was uh, my latest feature uh which was predestined yeah and then the one before that which was lost um yes. i did that when i was 16 which that was crazy um because yeah. i had never did a feature before like during that time so yeah. you know coming from just being a one-man band you know you're the camera you know my dad's sound you know my mom's helping here like you know little ones here so Coming from that to now, I have a DP, I have assistant director, I have PAs, I have so it's like nice. It was a learning experience for me at sixteen because I'm like, whoa, like I, I'm not used to you know all of this endeavor. But never, never. Um, but that film, people say that's probably the saddest movie I've made. <laughs> um, really? Yeah, because Lost is a coming of a Lost is a coming of age film following this character named Job, who basically loses um his family at a young age and he has to navigate life on his own. Um that's basically lost. And um the message of that film was um just basically to have more compassion, have more compassion yeah. for people because we never know what they're going through. And a right. real big point a real big pinpoint in that movie is homelessness um because he he ends up homeless so you know uh, uh at that particular time i believe that's when this was like 2016 2015 um that's when we was hearing a lot of things in the news regarding you know uh homeless you know homeless people you know it was some homeless people that was dying and it was a lot of things going on in that so i was just like well you know i want to make a film to definitely speak to that you know speak to that message um and really put that out there so that was that film at that time and you know uh, thank god that film did uh that film did really well it went over to london um nice. we had, yeah we won a couple of awards over there in london England. Woo! Uh, predest I mean, lost, and uh, it, it went some places. So I was excited about that. So yeah, yes, ma'am. Nice. Okay, that's. I mean, 
that's just amazing. Where can people find your films? Predestined Definitely. and Lost. Yeah, so uh, they actually will be coming to bigger streamers very, very soon. So everybody just stay tuned for that. You can follow uh, my Instagram, follow uh, my social media, my website. Um, you can stay updated on all of that. But um, my films are in the process of being licensed to um, other platforms. So yes, ma'am. Okay. And with, with Lost and Predestined, like first, what is the message? Like, I, I know you said compassion in Lost and Predestined. What was the message that you wanted to get across to your audience? Mm, so many messages um, and Predestined. Mm. Uh, uh, redemption. <laughs> redemption mm. is one. Um, forgiveness is, is another one. Also, another big message is not allowing our our, how can I say, occupation or our work to overshadow the family, um, which is something that wow. we see that the character, our main character goes through, you know, um, and not to give too much of the movie out, but, you know, I will say this, you know, with, with that particular character, um, she didn't have the best relationship with her mom, um, mm -hmm. mom, you know, valued the what she did and her position in gospel over basically being her mother. So we mm -hmm. see a lot of that inner hurt and that inner pain, you know, yeah. Yeah, kind of really show out on screen um, in a fun, creative way, of course, but it still has its messages, you know. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a lot of things that you can take away. And something that I, I love to do, like, a, along with my films, um, each character has something. So each character has something that you'll be able to relate to. If you can't relate to this character, well, you'll be able to relate to that character or you'll be able to yeah. say, oh, I know somebody like that. Or I know, you know, really humanizing these characters to make it feel like these are our next door neighbors. You know, this is yeah. Sally from down the street. Like, you know, I know yeah. Sally. You know, I know I know this story, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I know her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, that, that those are so um the messages for, you know, those two films there. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's just amazing that you were just so insightful. I mean, just at that age, being so insightful to write these stories and to film them, to like put them up, yeah, you know, get legs on them and get them out there. That's awesome. Thank you. You know, congratulations you. to you Thank for just you. for having that confidence, for having that tenacity, you know. Yes, ma'am. I love it. So over the years, you've created over 21 film projects, yeah? Yes, ma'am. Okay, wow. Each with its own unique story and message. Is there any particular project that holds that special place in your heart? And if so, why? Oh, um, I would say yes, but it's, it's material that's not released yet. It's oh, material okay, that's okay. not released yet. But I will say yes, because um, I'm always constantly in the lab creating something. Um, okay. like even now, we're in the midst of... Um, ready to release another short um called monday which is very exciting um it's it's a different type of take on a real issue dealing with um uh, women who go through preeclampsia and who go through issues dealing with pregnancy so it wow. is a very creative spin on that um so that's getting ready to be released but outside of that i'm working on uh my next my next feature which is a horror film which we Ooh. are yeah it's 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 something it's something different it's something and i like me, it already oh listen with me being and here's the thing i am a horror film lover i'm a me horror too. film lover. Yeah. Uh, listen and and for me i like real horror i like true horror i like horror that creeps you out horror oh i love that, it like, you want to turn the bathroom lights on you know you like yeah. i know i can be the only one that when you go in the bathroom after you watch a horror movie you move You're the like, shower curtain to see if somebody's in there right, right, <laughs> like, right. Exactly. You get very paranoid you know that's the type of horror i like so this next i film, like it yeah this next film honestly i'll say will probably be one of my most ambitious projects i have i have done um yeah. i look forward to releasing that um and just seeing the response from it it's going to be crazy <laughs> oh my god you gotta come back here and talk about that film and the and the other one the preeclampsia you yes, come back here and let's yes. discuss it i know preeclampsia is a huge deal right now like i hadn't heard like what what is that in like the past year or so two years like i've been hearing so much about it and so many women of color are experiencing this situation and it's like you know there was something going around uh on the internet that it's a lot of professional black women who are experiencing this and that's not making it out of you know that room yeah and also it's a big thing dealing with 
um, it's a big issue dealing with African American women and their treatment in the medical field when it comes yeah. down to having, um, to you know, to being pregnant. Matter of fact, it was funny enough. It was a video that was just released. Um, I want to say maybe a day or so ago. I seen it with Kyla Pratt, the actress Kyla Pratt, and she was saying her experience. Like of her. Her. When she, I love her. Uh, yeah. She was saying how when she was pregnant in the hospital and how when she was telling the nurse that she's having contractions, the nurse looked at the machine. She says, no, you're not. You're not having contractions. Like completely dismissed her and her feeling. And she what? demanded to see the doctor. And when the doctor came in, the doctor said, oh, you're six centimeters. Of pre- like we have to prepare you for emergency C-section. Um, what? If she did not get her doctor, her baby would not have been here. So, and that is an ongoing issue um, that we see, you know, in the medical health field. Not saying that's every situation, because you do right. have a lot of medical professionals that are very attentive. But um, it's not to say that we can just ignore it either. Um, right. So, you know, it's definitely, you know, that short film Monday would definitely hit on that that standpoint as far as that message. So, yes, ma'am. Well, it had to become uh, common enough. For it to even be discussed. That's it. Yeah. Because you know, we hadn't heard anything really about it until like, I know, like for me, since like two years ago. So, yeah, I mean, there's great medical professionals. Yeah. But it has obviously, like I said, gotten common enough that people had to speak on it. Yeah. They had to start doing documentaries on it to get this message out there to say this is going on in our community and it needs to something needs to be done about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So beyond filmmaking, you're also known for your advocacy work in the community. Tell us about some of the initiatives you're most passionate about and how you're making a difference. I mean, it's clear how you're making a difference, but you tell me because (laughs) we want to know. How you doing it and what are the differences and all these people and the kids? I mean, because I'm sure it's inspiring, not just the children. I mean, you're an inspiration to adults as well. Oh, so, wow. yeah. Tell yeah. me, do I need to repeat it again? Because I had so much more to say. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Uh, no, yeah. It, th- that journey began fairly young. I'll say that journey really kicked off when uh, after the book, after the You Are Never Too Young book, um, I started going around. I started speaking a lot more. So I would go to a lot of, you know, juvenile centers, you know, talk to the youth. And, you know, a lot of uh, we would tour with that book. So we'll go to different schools and I would have workshops with the schools and not just even with the juveniles, you know, in the schools. I would also go to the prisons and I would talk with the women. I would talk with the men, you know, nice. giving them a different perspective from a young person, you know, just encouraging them. Um, and, you know, I've worked with, you know, a, a couple of different organizations, you know, Generational Cure is one, um, the Trayvon Martin Foundation. Um, I, I did, I was, I did a, a lot of work with them uh, for some years, uh, an amazing foundation. I will always tell any and everybody um, to definitely support that foundation to support the family. They are doing amazing work in the community. Um, And I I did a lot of work with them for years. And, you know, outside of that, uh, I had a program that I will run, uh, which is called Yanti, um, which is actually an acronym for my book, You Are Never Too Young, uh, Yanti. Yanti was a program that uh, I would uh, do, which was like a summer program. And we would help the kids, you know, basically get into entertainment, you know, the ones that wanted to get into filmmaking, writing, Mm -hmm. you know, makeup, dance, like, you know, anything with creative arts, you know, we will host classes, workshops, events, you know, we'll have things going on every single day, every single week, you know, you know, just basically, um, basically uh, uh, crafting and, and encouraging that next generation of inspiration and, and next generation of creators, you know, because, you know, I started at, at, at my journey started in maybe 2008, 2009. Um, and since then, you know, I, all of our, all of ever wanted to do was just uh, just let the ones that's coming behind me know that it's okay to step out there and to do your thing. And now more than ever, social media is a real big thing. You know, yeah. back then during that time, you no know, Facebook had just came out. You know, Facebook had just came out. MySpace had just went away. You know, we didn't have right. TikTok. You know, we have you know all of these other you know things. So now it's it's 
it's way easier to now yeah. pick up your phone, create a film if you're a young filmmaker or create something. You know, back then I would have, and I, I'm talking about back then, but back then I would have like the big old camera. I would have to like hold on my shoulder and I'll have the camcorders and all the little old systems you would have to kind of yeah. like move it through. Now they can just do everything on their phone. So, you know, I'm like, I'm a little bit jealous of y'all now because if I had that back then, right. oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm like, right. I had to, I had to learn this stuff manually. <laughs> like you guys could just do it on your phones. So, you right. know, uh, yeah, that journey pretty much started, you know, uh, from that young age. And that's something that I just pray, you know, that 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 just resonates with people, you know, as I continue to, you know, go on this journey and continue to evolve. Um, it's just basically the message of, you know, inspiration to, you know, the young, the young creators, you know, not just the young creators, but anybody that have a dream, a passion, a vision, you know, anything of that sort. So, yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's wonderful. So now, how old are you now? I'm 23. I'm 23. 23. Now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Wow, <laughs> I feel, you listen, I feel, so much already. Let, to, to God. To God be the glory. I always give him all of the praise. Um, because I, I do know my journey is very... Uh, it's very different. It's very uncommon um, for, sure. you know, for the time. You know, um, But I will say it's what is so weird coming up during that time what was uncommon to a lot of people became a little common to me because during that time it was a i would say it was like a small nucleus circle of young people who ironically all started at the same age um so i have a i have a good friend his name is skylar gray he's a um, street artist he's a painter painted for some of the biggest people that you can even imagine his work has been featured in art museums in Dubai and everything else. And he started wow. at that particular age of nine. And uh, Gabrielle Jordan is somebody else. She's a jewelry maker um, who grew her company to us. She was doing TED Talks across this country and everything. She started at nine. And uh, Zandra, uh, who, who's another um, colleague um, um, from back in the day, she started at nine and she has like a multi-million dollar skincare line. Wow. Um, I did that at nine. So it was like, for what was kind of uncommon, I began to go into realms where I see, okay, well, what I'm doing is not that uncommon so that means that there are more people more kids out there that we need to get this message out there to let them yeah. know guys y'all can do it you know right. y'all can go for it you know so right. yeah it, it's it's been a journey it's been a journey nice now you've been honored alongside alongside some real heavy hitters some industry yeah. legends such as ava duvernay and sydney portier and that is just amazing what does it mean to you to receive recognition for your work from such esteemed peers it means more than um it, it means more than people would know um especially because uh some of them are not here no more um like you know Harry Belafonte sitting Portier and you know uh just being able to be honored alongside these legends I remember when I was getting the call to like, hey, we're honoring, you know, you, Bishop Jakes, you know, Harry Belafonte. I'm like, y'all want me in this lineup? <laughs> wow, <laughs> like, wow. Like, what? And I was like, at the time, I'm maybe like 16, 16, 17 at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, and then Ava DuVernay, one of my all time heroes in the film industry, you know, getting a, a, a opportunity to be honored alongside her. Um, on BET at like 14 years old. It's it's nothing but God. And that's what I say. Right. It's nothing but God. I take no credit at all. And I hold every single moment um, with value. Um, the yeah. big moments and the small moments, um, I, I hold them with value because every moment is still a moment that you don't have to have. So that's right. how I look at it. So yes, ma'am. Awesome. Okay. So from major film festivals to receiving awards overseas, your work has garnered international acclaim so which is just absolutely amazing what challenges have you faced along the way how have they shaped you as an artist and advocate wow many challenges i would say many challenges um Oh, gosh, one of them being having to prove yourself is 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 one thing. Um, because that can get that can kind of get tiring. It's like, guys, just trust me. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, no, you know, you gotta prove yourself, which I, I I you know, I get it, I get it. Uh, but that was a challenge. Um, but then also just the ups and downs of the business, you know. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give everybody this story. Um, and this is something I just now probably recently more so started talking about. Um, uh, and this is no, uh, please, you guys take this with no malice at all, um, because I, I love them dearly, even till this day. Um, but uh, for example, 
I was, uh, what was this? I was like 18 and I had did a television pilot for my uh, TV show called okay. The Mayor's Wife. Um, it was signed on to Wendy Williams Productions um, at the time. And we was uh, collaborating on the project and, you know, doing some other things in the midst, you know, and then when everything kind of you like, you know, went haywire, you know, I would say that kind of, um, you know, of course, with their personal issues that kind of um, took me on a roller coaster, you know, especially being so young, you know, you're 18, you know, you're looking at it like this is, oh, wow, like, you know, we're doing some great things here. Yeah. And then when things kind of go ups and downs, so I would say the up and downs of the business and, you know, you know, it's the ups and downs of the business. And if you don't know who you are outside of what you do. You yeah. will get lost in that persona of what you do and who you are when things don't work out. Then you're falling yeah. down a rabbit hole with it, and yeah. that's something that um that's something that I, I it took me some time to really uh I, I can, how can I say um navigate navigate and go through um especially because you know when you're so young and you're going after it you know you're achieving it and you know you hit certain milestones in your career and nobody prepares you for the ups and downs of the business nobody right. prepares you that hey one day you're going to have this opportunity but hey tomorrow it can look like this right. um, so nobody prepares you for that so you know that's kind of something that you have to find out so um yeah. the advice I would give to anybody that's working in this business is know who you are outside of what you do because what you do is only one percent of who you are mm -hmm. and that is something that i always try to stress out to everybody um because when you know who you are outside of what you do whatever happens in the business is just business that doesn't affect you as a person that doesn't affect you know your mentality you know and you don't have to question your character you don't have to question your worth your value and know you are valuable even without this industry and you know and you are valuable in this industry you yes. know so i would say it's all it's it's all part of a uh part of a learning lesson you know it's part of a learning lesson a growing thing for everybody yeah so, yeah yeah you're so right no one like really tells you what does that look like when like i know for me i wrote my book and i'm writing about all you know those really great highs you know when you're starting out and all the successes and then when the light's not shining on you anymore, or, you know, for that moment, like, what do you do? Yeah. You know, yeah. what does that even look like? You know, how, you know, because your work, you are, you become your work, your work becomes you. That's who you know yourself to be. So when then you're not, when you're not doing the work, now what? Yeah. yeah. Like, and you don't know how long that's gonna last. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's the truth. That's the truth. Matter of fact, it's something that I hear. Um, Tia and Tamara. It was a, a it was an interview that they did, and a big shout out to their mother um, yes. because she she's, they <clears throat> she told them when they was riding in a limo going to a film premiere. She told them in a, in the limo. She said, "This is not going to be like this always." Mm. She says, "You're hot today." But it's yeah. not going to be like this always. Know who you are outside yeah. of this. When you step out of this truck, when you step out of this limo, when you get off that carpet, when you go home, know who you are. Um, and yeah. that's what too, I'll tell everybody is, you know, don't allow your work in this business to become your identity because it's not your identity. Um, right. and, and honestly, it, that's how people get messed up in the head. That's how you get messed up in the mind because, you know, a lot of times, and you know, in this business, you got a lot of people who would tell you who you are before you know who you are. You know, they exactly. will tell you who you are. So now you're listening to so many different opinions about who am I or who should I be? And you really don't know yourself. So, right. you know, yeah, yeah, it, it definitely can be tricky. So that's that's the advice I would give to everybody. Yeah. And yeah. that's not just for, for children. I mean, that's for yeah. adults, too. Absolutely. You know, a lot of adults, they don't know themselves because they've been in like one space for so long. That when something, you know, gets out of place. Who am I? What do I do? What right. do I even like to do? Right. Oh my gosh. You know, where am I going? How, right. how do I get out of here? <laughs> right. Like right. It becomes a journey. It becomes a journey. Yeah. And it gets uh it, it, it can be a lot. I'm never gonna lie. It can be overwhelming, you know, when you're in that space and you're trying to figure out everything, you know, you're trying to figure out, okay, when the camera is down, who am I at the end of the day? You know. Right. What are some other things that I like to do? Like, you know, when when I'm not doing this, when I'm not this person or when I'm not, you know, yeah. this, you know, and that's why I tell everybody, listen, you are you are who you are. Know your worth, know your value yeah. and know what it is that you bring to the table. And whether you're sitting at that table or at another table, you are still yeah. just as valuable as you are. And you, you got to know you got to know yourself. You got to know yourself. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, and it's kind of like preparing like that word. Like you don't know what it's going to look like. You don't know how it's going to come. And it's like, you know, the word, you're preparing yourself in it, you know, because, well, that's what you do. But you don't really know what it's like until it happens. Yeah, yeah. And it's being prepared for that time. It's like you're not looking for anything to go wrong, but life is going life, you yeah. know. <laughs> and you just kind of you want to be prepared in that capacity for whatever it's going to throw at you. You know, you're ready. Yeah, you got to be. Yeah. I mean, I went through that even like being married to, you know, not being married, you know, being in my career, being like at the top of my game to like then nothing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that it was a scary time because that was that's what I knew. So now how do I navigate this? Then my marriage is falling to pieces. How do I navigate this? So much comes at one time. But I'm so grateful for the word because yeah. I will always say, like, I, you know, I knew the word. I had been in church, you know, but when I saw God's word, like, reach out its hand, Jesus, like, reaching out his hand while I'm under this rubble yeah. and, like, take my hand. We can do this. You know, it was like that sink or swim moment. And I chose to swim. and. I <laughs> Obviously, I'm grateful that that's yeah. what I chose, but yeah. I saw that word reach out to me and I actually I saw it. I, I I experienced it in action, saving me mentally, emotionally, which, you know, encompasses saving my life. Yeah. And that was being in preparation for something that I didn't expect to come, but it did. Absolutely. And so I like that when you tell people, I mean, I tell people that to know who you are. Be yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, so you, important because we're trying to please everyone. We're trying to do what, you know, everyone's telling us to do. And you can get lost in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is so important, too, to find something that grounds you. You yeah. know, um, you got to find something that grounds you. Um, And just similar to you, you know, my faith is another thing that grounds me. You know, at the end of the day, you know, when you have nobody else that you can look to or turn to, you know, you got the man upstairs and you got to find something that grounds you and that keeps you. Because like you said, life be life and life is going to life that everybody's yeah. life is going to life at some point. Right. In time. So, you know, you need to have something that you can go back to that you yeah. can say at the end of the day, if all else fails, I have him. And yes. that alone is all you need. Um, and right. then a, lot, a lot of times it's like having, you know, and I'm big on faith. I even have a, a tattoo. Um, that says always keep the faith. Um, just a reminder to myself to always keep the faith because a lot of times when life get dark or, you know, when we get in situations where, you know, we feel as if it's too dark to make it through. Um, yeah. I always say faith is not an easy thing. Faith is a very scary thing because it's almost like taking God's hand with a blindfold. You don't know where yeah. you're going. you don't know where he's leading you. It's just God. I got to trust you. I just got to yeah. trust you. You know, and a lot of times, you know, when things get too dark, you can't see your own way out. So, you know, a lot of times you got to lean on things that you. Uh, that's why, you know, and not to, not to go too biblical, but that's why in the word, you know, it goes into, you know, basically leaning on your faith. you got to lean on the things that you don't see instead of the things that you yes. do see. Because a lot of times when we look at our situations or we look at the things that's currently happening in our life, we think that that is all that it is. And a lot, yeah. and the truth be told, that is not it. That's just one part of your journey. Um, yeah. That's just one section of your journey. And there's so much more life to come after that. You just got to make it through that one moment. Just make yeah. it through one step. And some something I'll tell everybody is take it day for day. You know, a lot of yeah. times we like to rush the process. We like to just get over it. God, I don't want to feel this no more. I don't want to have right. this no more. Let me just zoom, zoom, zoom. But a lot of yeah. times zooming through it, you know, it, you may seem like you're doing the right thing in the moment, but that leaves a lot of unresolved issues, you know, that yes. is still there that may show up in different areas later. So take it day for day, you know, take your, it's okay to take your time. And, you know, something I tell everybody, it's okay to sink in it, feel it, yes. feel it all, feel it all, because all of what it is you're feeling is going to be your story one day. Yeah. All of what it is you're That's feeling true. is going to be, it's going to be your, it's going to be your testimony basically. And what's a testimony without a test? So. That's yeah. right. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you know, and I like it that you're so young to tell people this, you know, because we all need to hear it. You know, we all need to get that inspiration and encouragement sometimes that, like you say, just feel it. 
you know, go through it, you know, and that's what I would say too. You know, a lot of mine will talk about like the grieving. You don't try to hold it onto it and, and not do it. Let mm -hmm. it happen so you can get through it yeah. and <laughs> not be hanging out there. Yeah. And it yeah. don't come back for you later. Mm hmm. You know, and, and just work through it. And I'm like, even for myself, I'm really working on embracing the journey, try not to control it, you know, give it, give the wheel to the Lord yeah, <laughs> and go along with it. And you so right, because it could be scary. And it's, it's really like trying to get into that word to say, you know, his word is the infallible truth, no matter what it looks like, no matter what's happening it's the truth. So I don't have to worry or be up in arms about things. He's got me. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's Woo. it. Come on now. <laughs> that takes some work. <laughs> yeah. And I, I want to discuss your advocacy in the community. Like, are there any stories um, like 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 maybe a, a couple of people's stories who lives you know you touched and you see you know where they are today and how your program just like really inspired them to push forward and get to a place that they are experiencing success whether it's even just success in life absolutely um and and it's it's a it's a couple of kids um, that are doing amazing things that have came through, you know, uh, the Yanti program, you know, they ventured off into music, you know, they're artists now and, you know, some are, you know, went to school for filmmaking and, nice. you know, other things like that. Yeah. And then I would say uh, the biggest thing, too, is. And I will say this, y'all. I may be 23, but like I said, my mind is 83. So bear with me. Um, a lot, you know, I'm going to be honest. I have a hard time remembering things. And like. Ah! My, my, <laughs> I'm, and listen, Miss Todd, my parents, everybody knows. I, I, I will literally forget things in a minute. They'll be like, matter of fact, this is just a little fun story. I was riding in the car with um, my dad, and I was like, yeah, I'm like, I want to go to Texas. Like, I want to go to Texas. I've never been to Texas. My dad looked over, he said, you don't remember when you had your book tour and you went to Texas? I was like, we've been to Texas. He was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, there's a million stuff up here. So I wish I could pinpoint exactly one particular story, but I could, I'll give you a general, a generalization of it. Yeah. But I will also say too, um, what is beautiful for me is, um, it's just anytime anybody can just take some type of inspiration from anything that I said, because I'm, I, I don't purposely come out here to, you know, be anything but who I am. Um, so, you know, whenever who I am affects anybody else, you know, whatever it is, whatever I said or whatever it is that I've done, you know, I've had, you know, I, and what really touched me, honestly, and this is this is not just, you know, with the youth, but this is with people that I've worked with, um, you know, yeah. actors of, of mine, you know, that have been in my sets and films, you know, um, matter of fact, one of one of the actresses, her name is Patrona Thompson. She has gone on to uh, be, with, be with God now. Um, but I remember she told me, she said. I got to live on my dream because of you, Thank because God. like I, I've got I've got to experience this what I've always wanted to as a child because of you. That alone touches me more than you can even imagine. Um, and the stories like that, and it's more stories like that. Um, but it really touches me because what I come to realize is a lot of times our destiny is tied in with other people's destinies. Yes. A lot yes. of times there are opportunities, you know, that we have to create to allow other people to get that moment, to allow other yeah. people to shine. You know, it's us. It's like you you got you got to share it around. You know, you got you got to pass it around. You know, you got to you got to be that inspiration. And I don't take that um, lightly. I do not take any of that lightly, because at the end of the day, you know, we're all just vessels that God is just using because everything here with us is borrowed. So while you're borrowing it, do the best of what you can with it. So absolutely. Absolutely. Well, where are you from? I'm are from my from Miami. Miami? Miami, ah! Florida, born and raised. Uh, I, I live in Atlanta now, but Miami, Florida, born and raised, born and raised. <laughs> wow. Yeah, me too. That's that's where I'm yeah. from. Too. So now Florida. you're in Atlanta. Yeah, that's the place to be. I mean, to like really keep moving forward to, yes, you know, to keep thriving. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm so happy for you. Um, please tell everyone again your films that they, they can go see right now and tell us where they can find you on social media. And then tell us like, if, 
I, I'm like running all these questions so I can remember them. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> I know about that forgetting stuff because my mom would be like, "Oh yeah, this is so and so and so. Remember him or remember her?" No. I'd be like, "No, who?" <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some advice for that. You ready for it? Yes, I, please. I've been to, I've been at many events where this has happened to me. People will come up to me. They'll be like, "Aaron, oh my gosh, it's so good to see you again. Hi, how are you doing?" The best way to put it on, just say, "Hi, love, how are you?" You don't gotta remember their name. Just call them love. Hi, love, how are you doing? It's so nice to see. I, listen, I had to fake that many of days. I would never say to the people I faked it to because it's not that you didn't hold significant value in my head. It's just I got right. a million stuff up here. You know, I just a lot of stuff right. going on. You know, I just don't remember yeah. everything. So you know, I, I just adopted that now. I just be like, "Hi, how are you? Oh, it's so nice to see you again." A lot of times I be like, "I don't know this person." <laughs> right, right. No, I, I wish you can't be like, yeah. Yeah, what's up? Hey, yeah. Listen, I'm the same way. I get it. I get it. Uh, but yeah, everybody, you can check out. Um, you can go to my website, aajpfilms.com. You can find out more information about the projects on there. Um, you can also go to, we got some stuff right now that is um, on YouTube. Um, Love Therapy Atlanta, uh, Maya, which is a, an incredible short film. Um, it's an experimental short film. It's actually based in the 1800s. It's a period piece. Can um, we talk about that? We didn't talk about it. No, it's a period piece. Oh, uh, yeah. So you guys can check out Maya. It's a period piece based back in the 1800s. Um, and it basically follows the psychosis of this slave owner um, at this particular time in her connection with this particular um, slave that she had, Maya. Um, and it, it's, a, it's one of those type of films where it, it's going to leave you scratching your head because you're going to be like, whoa, like what in the world it's like it's very yeah it, it was a fun project to do um actually uh professor so uh, patrona she's in that film and she plays maya's mother and the beginning is i will say guys watch it with caution the beginning is 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 is, is kind of graphic she's getting beat and whooped you know tied to a tree and it, yeah it, it goes there it go it definitely goes there but hey that's that's american history so right it's that's it's, right. Um, it's american history um yeah. So, you know, it's you guys can check out that um, uh, well predestined and lost. Like I said, they are in the process. You guys will be seeing that on some major streamers very, very soon. Um, and then I'm also in the midst of creating some new, new material, um, which will be coming out very, very soon. So everybody can stay updated on all of my social media. It's my full government name because there's many Aaron Johnsons out there. So I had to I had to separate myself to be a little different. So it's Aaron Avant Johnson. Um, and you can find that. Uh, you can find me on all social media at that tagline. And yeah, guys, just stay updated. We got a lot of great things coming. Um, also, we do this thing called Lights Camera Connection oh, up here in Atlanta, um, where we celebrate individuals, um, you know, who's basically done great work in this industry. Um, you we, we at the top of this year in January, we honored uh Javon Johnson from Tyler Perry's The Oval. Um, he's been in this business probably well over 30 plus, 40 plus years. Um, we honored him with the Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, Chrissy Collins, who uh, starred in several of Tyler Perry films, as well as she was the background singer for Beyonce for like 17, 18 years. Um, wow. yeah, with her group, The Mamas, um, they were the background singers for Beyonce. So we honored her. And this go around, um, we have Demetra McKinney that we're honoring. We have, um, uh, Angel Love. Um, we have Rick Party. Rick Party. Uh, 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 if y'all, anybody from Miami, y'all know Rick Party, 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 <laughs> everybody in the morning. <laughs> uh, he's the voice of ESPN and BET. And uh, uh, yeah, we're honoring some great people this go around. Um, so that's something that we do here um, in Atlanta. Nice. But, yeah, this is the first year of it. Um, so outside of that, guys, you know, I, I just truly believe in just giving people, you know, their flowers, giving people their recognition. Right. Um, and outside of that, you know, uh, just being an inspiration myself, you know, so there will be more books coming. There will be more films coming um, and there will be more great things coming. So, uh, yeah. guys. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and just like coming out here, letting us know everything you're doing, being transparent. That's what we like on Planet Rock, being transparent. Yes, ma'am. And just being who you are and being just comfortable with that and sharing all your successes and still remaining humble, you know, obviously, you know, giving God all the glory 
So thank you so much. I'm so happy to have you. I can't wait to see this Maya. Please tell us where this is again. It, tell us Listen, where this is I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have Ty send it to you. Uh, but you can find it on YouTube, guys. You just type in YouTube. Maya short film. You can just type my name, Aaron Johnson. It'll come up. You guys will now be there, able to watch it. There was something on Tubi. Is there is that that was so predestined and lost was originally on Tubi. Um, but, you know, we, we took them down because, like I said, we're in the midst of licensing them, you know, to some bigger streamers. So you guys will be able to see that again. However, you guys can check out the trailers. The trailers are still up on YouTube. They're still up on all my social media for okay. you guys to um, take a look at. Um, but, yeah, and then we got some new work that's coming out. So I'm excited for that. Um, so, yeah, you guys, you have to stay updated, stay abreast. There's going to be a lot of big things coming. And then we have some more events that we're doing. Um, you know, I'm getting more into the uh, also the mental health um, field as well. So, okay. you know, you guys will be seeing a lot of things geared towards mental health because that's something I really stand by, something I really believe. You know, I believe in just as well, you got to take care of your physical health. Your mental is just as important because right. without your mind, the body can't function. So can't function. Thank you so much again. We are like wrapping up so like right on time because it's like thunder in here, <laughs> lightning, raining. Oh. Like you know that rain floor to get where you can't see like nothing in front of you, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been raining all day. It literally just stopped raining before I jumped on this, and it's supposed to rain again in a few hours. So I, I get it. I understand. Oh well, yeah. Cause we have been under a tornado watch. I didn't even know till my mom called and said. What's going on there? And I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> but like, it had been so windy. And uh, yeah, now it's just like pouring. And like, I don't know if you could hear it in the background, but it's like, <laughs> you know how we get it. Oh, I know. I yeah. know. I know. <laughs> well, I thank know. you all so much for coming to like chill with us here at Planet Rock. We're here with uh, Aaron Avant Johnson, who's sharing his story, sharing his passion. And come back next week to Envision-Radio.com, where we will have more stories of insight and inspiration right here on Planet Rock. Look forward to listening to us next week. Have a blessed and wonderful day.